Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. October is here already, and that means it's time to make sure you enroll in health insurance and everything else that goes with it for 2024. So we're talking life insurance, hospital indemnity plans, disability. It can all be overwhelming. For instance, should you go with a high deductible policy? And if so, what are the risks? To break it all down and to figure out what's right for you, we are talking with Darren Reeser, who's with Securian Financial. He'll help all those hard to make decisions a little more understandable before you officially sign up. This is On Your Side with Susan Campbell and Gary Harper, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. Susan, how are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? You know, I'm very happy today because the weather is just incredible outside. It's pretty perfect. My kids say it is cruising weather. We put down the windows, open the sunroof, and we just sang at the top of our lungs. I had the sunroof open on my car today coming in. It was like, wow, this feels is re- good. feels really good. I mean, anything beats 115, 118 degrees, which I don't really mind, but when it's like months and months when at a time. it drags, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, Give, give us a break. Right? We have hit that sweet spot, though. We earned it, yes. and we're all going to enjoy it. Um, speaking of cruising, cruising. I, have, I have a golf cart. I think you knew that. <laughs> I do know that. Yeah, this is the best season to be driving around. I mean, I drive that thing everywhere. Where? Where do you take your golf cart? Grocery store, for instance. My wife went and got a petty... What do you call it? A mani a mani pedi. Uh-huh. She took the golf cart to the mani pedi place. Are there parking spots specifically for golf carts at where s- you live? At some places there are. Yes. There, <laughs> there, so there's like a golf club, uh, and it's like all little tiny little spots, obviously for golf golf carts. I feel like you are like getting ready to announce your retirement or something to May- me. This sounds like you're already living in a retirement community. Susan, I have an announcement to make right now. <laughs> Don't and, leave and, me. And no. I, am, I am not retiring. Okay. Okay. Good, okay good, so good. yeah, don't put that out there. Okay. Um, but you know, talking about beautiful weather and a great season it is right now. There's another season going on. We're talking about open enrollment season. I I don't. I always kind of start biting my nails around here when it comes to open enrollment because you want to make sure you make the right decision because once once you sign off, you check all those boxes, you're locked in. Yeah, you are locked in, and it's it's a lot of choices to make in some cases. You know, mm-hmm. depending on what your employer uh, or or the government has for you to choose. Right. You know, there are a ton of options. Right, and you know, I hear of other people like they they sign off and everything, and then like they get two or three months into it, and they're like, oh, I should have chose the X Y Z policy instead of and this then policy. And you have to wait and, and then, wait and wait. And every time a bill comes up or something, you yes. go, man. Yeah, that's true. I really, tr- I, I, I got the wrong you know, policy, whatever. So, so let's make right the right choices. We we are uh, going to be talking to Darren Reeser. He's with Securian Financial, and Darren, you're going to help us and our listeners make the right decisions for open enrollment, right? That's that's the goal. I'll that, do my best. That is the goal. Okay. So uh, tell us a little bit um, about Securing Financial, just so so we know, just a, a brief synopsis. You guys are in the uh, financial, obviously, and the insurance business. Um, and you guys got a lot of customers out there. We're the third largest group insurance life carrier in the country. So we have uh, multifaceted divisions, though, but primarily a group life insurance and group benefits, supplemental health. Uh, we have financial plan ends, uh, planner division. We have other independent agencies, but uh, really broad, 150 year old St. Paul, Minnesota based company. So let's just um, let's dive into it and and talk a little bit about health insurance. I think the biggest goal for people when they sign up is um, they just want the cheapest policy or the cheapest rate, but that's not always the best route. Correct. Sure thing. Yeah, it's important for you to look at your family. And if you have the luxury of using your employer's tools, a lot of major medical carriers now have uh, educational tools that will look back at last year's snapshot of what your pharmaceutical spend was, where your medical claims were. You can break it down by dependence, you know, which one of your family members uh, used the claims and what. And so really look at what were the total of those claims and do the math and figure out how much did I spend out of pocket. And that put that together then with how much did I spend on premium? And at open enrollments, our opportunity to look at those things and say, geez, I really didn't go to the doctor last year, but our nature is to defer to that really rich, really expensive medical plan. So we feel like that's best. 
And we, often we feel like, well, the less exposure I have, the better that is. But if you're paying a lot of premium for something that you're not using, that's an example of maybe you're in the wrong plan. So this is that time of year. Yeah, let's kind of clarify that. If you are not going to the doctor on a regular basis or you don't have a chronic illness um, and you, you barely even see a physician, um, I'm assuming that maybe a high deductible would be better for that person as opposed to somebody who has a chronic illness or a disease or they just find themselves getting ill all the time. Absolutely. And so often the the consumer driven medical plans and then some of those uh, funds that are available, the health savings account might be a way to make sure that you put some money aside, though, if you had a real high deductible plan that was less expensive because you're generally healthy. But this might be an opportunity for you to make sure that if something did happen, you have money in that health savings account that you can use to pay for some of those out of pocket expenses. Let's talk a little bit about uh, HSAs and FSAs, because I think there are a lot of rules that make people a little bit worried about opting into a plan or they're not sure uh, if they're going to be able to use their money or what happens to that. Uh, what's the quick overview that people need to keep in mind when they are looking at those potential plans? So depending on the major medical plan you're on first, that's a qualifier. So you'd have to be on a true consumer driven medical plan to get an, access to an HSA or health savings account. Health savings account though, you own that forever. So that money goes in. If you don't spend it this year, it continues uh, to grow as you're making contributions to that in the future where flexible savings account or flexible spend account rather, uh, which is the one I think you're mentioning as well, is the use it or lose it account. So you put in a certain amount that you, you allocate for the year. If you don't use that, you've got a little bit of carryover at the end of the year, but then that money's gone. So you wanna be very particular about how much money you allocate to that flexible spending account. HSA rolls over uh, the F as the, the flexible spending account does not roll over and you, you have to use it or lose it as you had indicated. And uh, the right. FSA can be for things like uh, there's a child care FSA and things like that too. So it's not, there are different options even within point. that little umbrella. I know my family is yeah. very thankful for uh, the FSA for child care yeah. and the limits we, I, I would love it if the limits were a little bit higher because we blow through the, the limit pretty early on in the in the school year. Right, and, and real briefly for our listeners out there who may may have kids, so how does that work for, for Susan then? The, the money comes out uh, before taxes, right? Money comes out before taxes, and then depending on, uh, you know, what your school's plan is, you can, you pay in advance and then you get the refund or they just de determine, you know, the balance. So but it's helpful it's, though, it's right? It's super helpful when you're not, I mean, it's, it's a $5,000 limit. Wow. So it's $5,000. It's not taxed. Wow. That's okay. It's awesome. It, yeah, it, it is a good deal. Um, hey, Darren, let's jump to what some benefits are out there that maybe people are not paying attention to, or they just kind of skip over because they think it doesn't affect them. What are some of the benefits out there that people seem to skip over? Yeah, interesting. I think there's two things that people often overlook, life insurance and supplemental health. And when we go to open enrollment, often we're thinking very transactional, right? I'm gonna pick the plan. I'm gonna pick my contribution for the HSA or the FSA, as you mentioned. But life insurance and supplemental health benefits are another way that you can actually manage your financial future and protect your financial future. And I don't think people actively think about those products. So it's something I'd really encourage everybody to take a look at this year. Life insurance is one of those things that can be a hard conversation and uh, any kind of insurance, you know, you, you can trick yourself into thinking, oh, maybe I don't need this right now yeah. or I can hold off because the budget is super tight, right? Like, I right. think that's why there are so many people who haven't, explored it yet right i mean if if you're young let's say you're 25 do, do you find mm -hmm. a lot of people out there are like ah, i'm so young i don't need it and then you know maybe they do wind up needing it absolutely so i think that is a misnomer you're right if you're young uh, you may have student loan debt you may have credit card debt you may have a car loan uh, you may even have a mortgage already but if you have any kind of financial obligation that you don't want it because you just, because you don't have uh, maybe a family or children or other dependents, you don't want to leave those financial obligations with your family. Other thing about life insurance is the sooner you buy it, it's based on the, your age at the time you purchase it, right? So the sooner you can buy that life insurance, the least less expensive it will be. Hey, real quickly, I know a lot of people get this in the mail um, and they don't know how to read it because they don't really understand it. And I'm going off track a little bit here, but term insurance, what is term insurance and 
what are the the pros and cons with that? So term insurance, think of um, renting it, you know, for for as opposed to owning it. Term insurance, you would buy a policy with a specific death benefit or a face amount of that policy for the specific term. And so for 10 years or for 20 years or for 30 years. And so you think if you are thinking forward, you're like, well, my kids will be grown in 20 years from now and my mortgage will be paid for. Maybe I don't need this large life insurance benefit anymore. So you might want to buy a term policy to cover that specific term during your working years where you have the most amount of um, obligations at risk. And you would just, the premium's the same for that term. And when that term's over, you can re-up for another term. You can let it go. You know, you've got a lot of options to consider. When, when you sign up for that, though, if if you are still on this planet, which hopefully you are, <laughs> do you get any of that contribution back that you put in over, say, 10 or 20 years? For term insurance, no. Uh, so a permanent policy, there's whole life policies, there's universal, universal life policies that are available. Those where you have a permanent, and we say permanent because there's a permanent premium. And some of those policies also would develop or build cash value over time as well. So those are something you might want, if you have access to a financial planner, someone do a little more research about that. Premiums will be a little higher uh, because they're for the whole of your life. But by the same token, there is a savings uh, component that's built into those and you get some of that. Uh, you could access some of that as policy owner. You could pull that out as a policy loan, but there's things that um, not available as far as term insurance. Just to clarify, if you're 30 years old and you buy insurance for 20 years, term insurance, um, it, it, do you keep your 30 year old rate for that entire time or, or does it go up year by year? Uh, unfortunately, the rate will change when the 20 year policy runs out. So if you're 30 and you bought a 20 year policy, the rate is the same, the death benefits the same for that entire 20 year term. At the end of the 20 years, if you still want that uh, death benefit, you have to pay based on being 50 years old. So the premium will be adjusted based on your health condition at the time. It's uh, all the other variables that yeah. go into, just like a new policy. It's like starting all over again. How common is it for uh, employers to offer life insurance as part of uh, a package of benefits? It's quite common, actually. Uh, LIMRA, a research uh, marketing arm that studies the insurance industry, says that more people have life insurance through their employer than they have individual policies. And I think there's a, a lot of reasons for that. First of all, it's just the convenience of knowing that your employer's already vetted that out. There's a lot of things to think about as you're looking at these life insurance companies and the policies. And so your employer's already vetted that out, but getting it through your employer, it's also gonna be offered on a group basis. So you'll have guaranteed issue components where you don't have to answer health questions. Uh, you'll be able to get payroll deduction. In some cases you can pre-tax some of those premiums. So there, there are some advantages for uh, buying that through your employer. Are there disadvantages to using uh, an employer only? I, I mean, I, I know that our employer has uh, a certain life insurance benefit, um, but I, I believe it's um, a pretty limited. Is it one time, I, one time your salary? I, I believe, yeah. yeah. Well, that would be one of the disadvantages for sure, because if you need more insurance, then you would want to look to get outside of that. Or often many employers have a buy up uh, if you, for lack of a better phrase, where you could buy more uh, over and above what that group term amount is provided. But CNN has said in a recent study that 10 times your annual salary is a good starting point as far as that final death benefit. So if you made $50,000 a year, you'd want to be considering a $500,000 policy. Yeah, and that's an interesting rule of thumb to the it's important, I think, to have the number in your mind. Yeah, you're, you're, you know, because I think you can get overwhelmed. Yeah, you're, you're right. And that, that is a good rule of thumb. And just so you know, Susan, I, I think we can upgrade on our life insurance here. Like if you want more than one time your salary, you can buy you can buy up. So for open enrollment, keep that in mind. I know. That's one of those choices we were chatting about. My goodness. Hey, uh, there's another benefit out there that people don't understand. Um, hospital indemnity plans. How sure. does that work? And do you recommend that? Absolutely do recommend it. So you think about major medical insurance, major medical insurance pays doctors and hospitals. But we still have expenses, as we were talking about major medical earlier, about deductibles, co-insurance, out-of-pocket expenses. And it, for example, if you had... There's three types of supplemental health benefits. Hospital indemnity is one of those. The hospital indemnity plan specifically is if you're admitted to the hospital for any reason, it'll pay a specified amount for the first day you're admitted. 
and it'll pay a daily benefit thereafter. But it's not just for hospital admissions, like if you were admitted during for COVID, right, during the, the pandemic, or if you were in a car accident, hospital indemnity also provides benefits for someone if you were going to have an elective surgery and be admitted to the hospital. If you're going to deliver a baby, it'll help offset those labor and delivery charges. So there's a lot of different advantages for those supplemental health benefits that will pay or help offset that money that you're responsible for, for deductibles, co-insurance, et cetera. And those policies pay directly to you. Yeah. And the money, that's a good point because the money goes directly, like you said, to you and it doesn't pay medical bills or the hospital bills. It, it goes to you to, to help maybe pay for the time you missed from work or whatever. I mean, some plans start off with, if you're in there for uh, one day in the hospital, uh, that pays a thousand dollars. And then for every day after that, it's like a hundred dollars. So if you're in there for three days, it's like 12 or $1,300. I'm trying to do the math in my head. This is why I'm not, you a, did a good job. This is, I why, think. I, I, this is why I'm not, not a, an accountant, but, um, all right. So, but you would recommend the hospital indemnity plans in. Well, that, and then the other two uh, policies are uh, accident plans and critical illness. So those kind of cover the gamut of what your out-of-pocket medical expenses might be. And I think they're worth looking at accident plans. Think about if you had uh, your kids are playing soccer and they fracture their arm, they go to the emergency room, they've got diagnostic testing, you got x-rays, you got medical supplies, you get a cast, all those out-of-pocket expenses. That'd be a good example of what an accident plan would help you pay. So all those things, we've all taken kids to the emergency room, those that have kids at some point or other. A critical illness plan is for those that are really concerned about catastrophic medical events, critical illnesses in that sense. So a cancer diagnosis, heart attack, stroke, uh, end-stage renal failure, all significant expenses that if you were on a consumer-driven medical plan, for example, would be a really tough time for you to offset those expenses. So depending on what your family history is, your medical history, depending on where your concerns are, think about based on your medical plan, if something happened to me today and I had to pay my full deductible or my out-of-pocket max, could I afford that? And if the answer is no, and it is for more than 60% of Americans, if the answer is no, then a supplemental health product might be something for you to look at to make sure you can protect your financial future in the event something like that happened. Hey, can we go back to the example that you brought up with uh, your child who breaks a bone playing soccer or whatever, and you do have accidental insurance because he mm -hmm. broke his bone on accident, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But what happens if you also have health insurance or medical insurance? So right. what pays what? What goes first? Does it act as a supplemental? How does that work? Yeah, it's a good point. So these products would be considered supplemental and they're paid directly to you and they don't coordinate with the major medical insurance at all. So major medical is going to pay, depending on the health insurance plan that you're on, it's going to pay what it's designed to pay. There may be a deductible that you pay. So if you had a thousand dollar deductible, you're responsible for that first thousand dollars. And then there's a co-insurance component. 80% is usually what major medical carrier will pay next. And you'll pay the 20% up to a certain amount. Supplemental health doesn't care about that it's there's a schedule of benefits and so there's a dedicated amount for each one of the events that you can imagine so much for an x-ray so much for diagnostic testing doctor visits fractures there's a dedicated amount that's in the policy that's already predetermined and it'll tell you exactly what you get paid for that event to help then you can use the money again however you see fit wow so it kind of acts as as an indemnity plan then kind of it is an indemnity, it is an indemnity product yes oh okay all right well i'm learning something every day that's why we do this podcast. Um, all right, listen, are you ready for your open enrollment, Susan? I am way more prepared now. This was, I, we've done a lot of podcasts mm -hmm. that f make me feel, you know, like yeah. a grown up. And yeah. now that I'm married and have two children, like, of course, I'm a grown up. Yes. But this one was like the most adulting conversation yes. we've had it in kinda, a long time. It, it, it makes you, uh, it opens your eyes, it like, does. and makes you want to make the right choices. Hey, Darren, if people want to find out more about you or they want to find out more about Securian, uh, or any websites or social media, media accounts you want to get out there. Yep. www.securian.com. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much for being on the On Your Side podcast. I think I'm a lot smarter and um, Susan is always smarter than I am. So that's that goes Aww. unspoken. And uh, Darren, we'll have you back on sometime in the future then. Okay. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. The On Your Side podcast is produced by Brad Denny. Our audio engineer and editor is Todd Martin. Segment producer is Colin Stanton. And I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. If you have a problem you can't resolve, maybe we can't, send us a message through azfamily.com or our AZ Family mobile app. Look for the On Your Side section and leave us a message. 
Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Side podcast. And if you like it, leave us a review. We'll see you next week. On Your Side is on Good Morning Arizona every weekday morning at 645 and 7 o'clock and every weekday evening on Good Evening Arizona at 4 and 5 o'clock. You can also catch it on Arizona's Family News at 9 on 3TV every weeknight.